Okay, I guess I'll do a little update. <laughs> this is uh, the ranch, or this is where my daughter lives in town, but it's kind of like a big area out here. Uh, it's 20 minutes or quarter till two, and today was, I already finished the entire post. Uh, the video you saw earlier today, being I taught it earlier, like at around 11 o'clock, uh, I finished kind of everything. So that whole post can go up tonight. And I was like, I don't want, I was tempted to just say, you know what? Let me just post everything. It's done. All of the chapters from the ones I quoted, I made all the bullet points. So in essence, this post that you will see next Sunday is done. It's done because during the week I have other things to prepare. But I have a few of them already done too. The next uh, Tuesday Romans study, even though it's a restudy, I have to rework some of those. That's ready to go. Uh, this evening, the normal routine would be just posting some videos. <laughs> so everything is done ahead of time. And because I finished early, I came out here. If my daughter was back by now, I think she gets upset if I don't get the chance to teach here. She likes it when I teach here. And... Uh, she was working both uh, the nursery for like both services. And she did text me, uh, maybe thinking I'd come over at one, but like I said, I did it. It's, I'm here now, but she didn't show up because I texted her and said, we finished it. And I thought the only, uh, if I taught a little, which I'll try not to, uh, but the only benefit of like finishing everything and having everything done Maybe it's an example, too, of <coughs> accomplishing the mission, which is what I talked about on somewhat on the earlier video today, and the period of time you have to accomplish mission. And that's the benefit, I guess, because <coughs> you could, if you occupy your time, uh, you can finish. And like I said, all those notes, all my past chapters on all those teachings, uh, all of it's done. And it's, you know, it doesn't take long when you learn. But let me do a little update. I checked some news. Uh, today's post, text post that you saw earlier today, I tried to cover some of the issues. There were a couple of more killings in the last few days. There was a couple of shootings, drive-bys, and, an, and another bank robbery. So there was a lot of things that I left out that I just, you know, the public could see on all the local news sites of some of that stuff. And so I didn't go as hard as I could have gone. Uh, I'll do the update on the Twitter ban. And then this will be somewhat of a social media critique as well. When I was posting last night to Twitter, so today I said was what, December 30th? Whatever I said it was, I forget things. Um, Twitter, you know, when I went to share my post on Twitter, it said, uh, this account has been temporarily suspended. Now, I didn't read everything. Like I said, I have all these websites. And so when one is suspended, sometimes I just decide to leave it alone. You know, it's not like I've got to have that Twitter thing. And I do understand that I read... You say, why do you have to post so many from all those sides of the same thing, whether it's Twitter or whatever? Because I want everybody to be familiar with all the websites. And when the days come where Facebook, Twitter, the big ones, delete people, everybody already knows. Now, I remember, you know, that website or that website. And so that's a safety precaution in order to uh, not be dependent on one social media platform. But indeed, that's what the Twitter, when I went to share all those links on Twitter, it said that. Okay, so then this morning I figured, let me just read what they're asking. Google was the one who banned me temporarily. And it was Google that said, it looks like suspicious activity. You see, I have separate passwords for Twitter and for every website. Now, Google, especially somebody like myself, 
with so many different passwords for so many different websites, they will always tell you, those that are familiar, just sign on with Google. Because you're, when you sign on with your Google account, of course, you have a password for that as well. And so then they count that as a security. But what Google can do and does do is they, gain, they try to gain a monopoly. And there's a lot of people that do not remember all of their different passwords. I have them all written down for all these websites. But once you become dependent, because each time you log on to one of those sites, it says you can log on with Google, you can log on with Facebook, and some say, or with Twitter, being you're already signed in. But then what Google can do is they can try to monopolize, and if they want a competitor, Twitter, Google, and Facebook are all competitors. And so they can try to block a competitor. See, I logged on easily to YouTube, Blogger, and Google. But when I went to share on Twitter, it wasn't Twitter. Jack Dorsey, I think, is the CEO of Twitter. It wasn't Twitter who said we detected suspicious activity. The suspicious activity is just all of my posts and some think you know well certainly one guy can't be posting separately but I certainly am and it's just a process for what I already explained so it was Google that did that and and some uh, most of you are aware that they practice things like that but uh, well let's just say they do things like that so that's why I'm back on Twitter I just checked the news real quick Facebook banned Franklin Graham, the evangelist of the late Billy Graham, for 24 hours, I guess last night or yesterday, because of a post dating back to 2016 for hate speech. I just read that on the news. So why did Facebook go to a 2016 post to ban Franklin Graham? It was a response to a post that he wrote about Bruce Springsteen from Born to Run is the state song of New Jersey, Born to Run. And it's Bruce Springsteen, one of his hits. He played at clubs in Asbury Park, New Jersey, and I've been to the shore points of New Jersey. And then, you know, they call him the boss. I'm not a real big fan of Bruce Springsteen, and obviously politics, you know, Things like that affect people. But I just, I, I liked a few of the songs, but not a lot of them. Franklin Graham had wrote a response when Bruce Springsteen canceled the concert. A few years ago, some of the groups and singers were canceling concerts of states that basically were not politically correct. So we had it in Texas. Maybe you had it in your state. The whole debate should men be able to use women's restrooms if they identify as female. I think most parents would think, man, I don't want, you know, the possibility of some 50-year-old man using the bathroom with my young daughter because he claims to be female in gender. Well, Franklin Graham at the time criticized Bruce Springsteen for canceling the concert in one of those states because those that state particularly maybe North Carolina they were going to pass a law that said look you know you got to use the bathroom to the physical gender that you were born with okay well they Facebook went back and considered that hate speech and banned him for that the social media giants Twitter and I'll be honest, Twitter is less, they, they didn't want to ban people as freely as some of the other social media giants were doing. And the mainstream media began putting pressure. A lot of this came from the mainstream media. CNN and others began saying, we want certain people off social media, and then the whole social media thing is now in question. And they began like a uh, process of trying to do that. But the media, I read the news a lot. There are many things that you and I could read that are either 
unacceptable or just outright manipulations in many things that you see in the what's so-called mainstream media. And so they've attempted, they're losing somewhat of their position in society because we have online access to things of this nature. Sears Roebuck, okay, Sears, the famous Sears store. Uh, New York City had one, I don't know if that one shut down. But it looks like the brick and mortar stores, Sears as well, is just going to finally go by the wayside. I read an article on that, but why? Because online marketing and people who buy online and so forth is pretty much challenged the old standard of the brick and mortar store and how many people really want to get the Sears and Roebuck they canceled the catalog Sears used to have a catalog for the younger generation and you'd look through it and say oh I like this mini bike or dirt bike or whatever for Gus and then people could order but that's that's changed okay a lot of that has changed and so the same thing in the ability for people to communicate. The same thing, uh, the challenge of print media. I just actually did buy the Caller Times paper for this Sunday. It's quite expensive, but I bought it. But that, that thing is being challenged. Meaning, is that the way that down the road we're going to communicate? By having the actual building called the publishing building publishers in general which understood this challenge bookstores went out of business some famous ones because that's a system that says and i published the first book that i wrote through a independent publisher granted but i did pay for the books they sent me the books and that was the first book and those were nice little books i thought somebody i'd like to have kept one hard copy of that but people ask me every now and then, are you going to publish another one of your books? Well, I tell people, the way you do it now is through online. The way you do it now, I try to explain this. But I said, if you can write a post or write a book or do a whatever and put it on the web, you've gotten rid of it. I didn't make money from doing any of these things. And so why would you contact the physical publisher and they're going to print on the paper whatever message you desire to communicate. Then they send you those books, which happened in my case. And then you, I gave most of them away. And then you say, see, if you want the message, I gave some of them to Jehovah's Witnesses and Mormons. When they come to the door, I said, you know, you want a copy of my book? That's kind of falling by the wayside. So how does the mainstream media... How does it, the, the old institutions kind of challenge that? They challenge it by saying, you know, we want to report Franklin Graham. The post that was hate speech was simply a legitimate criticism of Bruce Springsteen that said, you know, the old traditional ways are still viable. The respecting of male and female and don't cross the lines by allowing a 50-year-old man to use a bathroom with your 12-year-old daughter, which Springsteen and others kind of advocated for. Well, that was hate speech. Well, now they're putting pressure on all of these things. So it was not Twitter. It was Google. And Google didn't give me that question when I got on YouTube, Blogger, or Google. But when you tried to log on through Twitter, of course, I could bypass and not log on through Google. I just go through the password and I don't even, you could use the other Firefox or the old Internet Explorer. Look, you, you know, but they'd like to monopolize things. So the little lesson I was thinking I would uh, maybe teach again out here and then post it, but I want to, I don't want to post it. Just, it's not just to prove the point, but it would just show, look, you can accomplish, you can accomplish. I was ready to uh, take, you know, go maybe do a ride and say, you know, I'm going to head up north before the end of the year. But we'll settle down a little bit. So this is just a little uh, news update. Also maybe a little, you know, example of to be focused on whatever mission God's called you to do. 
you can accomplish that. You can fulfill in the time period you have. Because there'll be a time period when it's then that's done. And you and walk where you have the light, because the night's coming where no man can walk. So you have a window of opportunity to accomplish mission. Accomplish mission in that window. Okay? Uh, my little things that I'm working on and all those things, all of that's a process. Everything is a process. It's spiritual worship. Even your purpose in life is spiritual worship. That's what that means in Romans. Look, if I teach, then someday you'll see this again. <laughs> Let's. Uh, Romans says in Romans 12, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service or spiritual worship. Be not conformed to this world, but be you transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So, your reasonable service in the King James translation and the newer one says spiritual worship. So your purpose and what you're doing in the kingdom of God is a process of worship. The service is worship. Remember that. And if you, even the challenge of what I talked about earlier on the video, the concept of brick and mortar, the, the church itself it has been challenged with that over these last 20 years or so. Is there such a thing as online church? Church is community. There was a scripture today, two or more gathered together in my name, dear mine, the midst. Let's see how long I went. Church is community. Now, granted, you have community with your brothers and sisters when you're near them, when you're fellowship. In Scripture, if you look at the first century, and some of what we were looking at today in the earlier teaching video, what you saw was that people at that time, in the first century, who were centered around their worship as being the temple. Okay? And I covered the history of the temple, how it developed. And in the day of Jesus, it was Herod's great temple, Herod the Great. Now, the main figure... Of the, there were various Herods, taught that before. <laughs> and the main one that we read about later, at, uh, Herod Antipas. But it was Herod the Great who built that temple in Jesus' day, which was the Herod that you read about in the birth narrative of Jesus. Okay, When we were, uh, he wanted to ch slay all the children because he knew that Messiah was born. And he, and he called the wise men, said, where? And they, and they quoted Micah. Out of Bethlehem of Frata shall he come forth. That's going to be the ruler. And that's how Herod, now that Herod dies. And the other ones rise up that we read about in the first century. So they organized their understanding of God, of holy places, of God's dwelling, as a concrete brick and mortar, if you will, temple. Which... That's how they understood it. And so now Jesus, in his radical revolutionary ministry, is developing a community of people, primarily those followers, those disciples, the walking by the Sea of Galilee, fishermen and miracles. This community, where two or more are gathered, there are mind and myths, I understand the context of that, was a different thing. It was a different dynamic. And so then we understand through the New Testament that the Spirit of God is now dwelling in a people. Now, He dwells in us individually and corporately. So, the local church, we understand, to be the local body of believers of the city and place you live. And then the church universal and church triumphant, our brothers and sisters who have gone on to be with the Lord, 
are still a part of the church. And, and people challenge those concepts. And then the universal church. So brothers and sisters all over the world, regardless of denomination, nationality. So it was actually a challenge of the brick and mortar mindset when God birthed his church. All of a sudden, the authority of God is in the people of God. And when they came to John, the Baptist, they said, what authority are you doing these things from? How, who gave you the, the same challenge to Jesus? How, who gave you the authority, Jesus? Because today, earlier today in the teaching video, we saw him at the age of 12 asking and questioning the religious scholars of the day. And like, where did it come from? They understood there was something different going on here. But at, later on, when Jesus ended his public ministry, they said, and who gave you the authority to do this? And he, he answered them with the question. Now, I'll tell you where my authority came from. But you have to answer this one for me. John the Baptist. Was his authority from God or from men? So they understood that there was, if you will, an ordination, a recognition that came from men, and then there was an ordination and recognition that comes from God. So he asked them. Now, the religious leaders knew that John was sent from God. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. And the prophets foretold to John the Baptist. So they had the little conversation among themselves and said, well, if we say John the Baptist's authority came from men, all hold John as a prophet. So they, that won't find. But if we say from, it came from God, then Jesus might have to say, why didn't you believe him? And they knew they didn't believe John. And he was sent from God. They said, well, we can't answer that. Now, Jesus knew that would be their response. He said, neither will I tell you by what authority I do these things. Now, the whole challenge of what we discussed already on this brief update is where is this authority reside? Where is it residing? It resides in, I, I, there was a quick article the last few days looking at the news sites for some Christian sites. And there's a famous author, I won't give his name, and I have a friend that asks me every now and then, did you ever read from this author or this Christian author? I said, oh, yes, I, you know, in the past. And then the title on the Christian online magazine, just looking, I go to it just to see the latest news in the Christian world. And it said, a message from this author, how the cross does not mean you have to deny yourself. Now, I didn't read it. I, I so the new message from this very famous Christian author said, the cross does not mean you must deny yourself. And I just thought of a verse off my head. Except the man take up his cross and denies himself. That's the context. Uh, the cross to you and me, it's, it, it's the prescribed method for you to fulfill your purpose in God's kingdom. And the cross to you and me will indeed be embracing the things that society might say. When, when Peter said to Jesus, Jesus is beginning to drop those seeds of what, what's coming down the road. I was reading John's Gospel, it said, he knew he came from God and was going to God. John, the writer we talked about earlier today, he knew that he was come from God and he was going to God. Talking about his departure. So when Jesus finally says flat out, I'm going to go and be crucified. Son of man is going to be delivered in the hands of sinful man. He's going to be crucified. And then Peter says, we're not going to let that happen. And he says, get thee behind me, Satan. For you, thou savest not the things that be of God, but those that be of men. So understand, Peter. The cross, I'm going to Peter for the redemption of humanity, that they don't even understand it. At the end of the day, I had a thought. 
just in the whole world of the intellectual world, the people that challenge things in society, they cannot just deny the historical fact of Jesus Christ, someone who came in the first century and was indeed crucified, and that he believed that it was in this crucifixion at the hands of sinful and wicked men that he would say from that cross, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they're doing. Now, that historical reality cannot be denied because some of the intellects of our world tried to challenge it at certain times and came up with different ways to deny it. And some were... I even heard the famous atheist Christopher Hitchens say once, just, just because Jesus might have risen or was risen doesn't mean he still was who he said he was. It was a, it was a debate, Christopher Hitchens, the late atheist. And I thought, why did he say that? Because he, look, he was an intellectual. He was an atheist, he was an intellectual. And he knew that there was evidence for that. So he said, well, even if he rose from death, you see. Now, for those who reject the faith, they pretty much came to this understanding that Jesus certainly believed, and even in even those who deny him, he certainly believed that he was dying for the sins of the world, that this was his mission. Now, for those who believe that he was deluded in that mission, imagine a person according to the skeptic, who convinced himself that the very people who were going to ultimately kill him on a cross, that he had to do that in order to save those very people. And that even those who say Jesus was deluded, he was driven by that belief that it was his death on the cross that would save humanity, and he would yell from the cross, not only, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? But forgive them, they do not know what they're doing. To the enemies who hated him. Who else would do that? And all of the people in society that you deem, these are the ones, this is the side, this is the viewpoint, this, they're all looking out for some agenda. They're really not concerned about you. I won't do all the debates about it. They're really concerned about the way they look when they pretend they advocate for you. That's what they're concerned about. I won't do all the debates of what are going on at this time at the end of 2018. But yet you had historical proof that there was one who said he was sent from God, who told his men... I, I'm going to go and be killed by wicked men, and it's in that death that I will save them. You say, and the atheist who says, yeah, we know he believed all that, but we still hate him. Then my question would be, why? Even if a man was deluded that his death would save you, if he loved you that much to have done that, why would you still hate that man. You see, in John's Gospel it says, light has come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. And they would not come to the light. That's it. That's the, You don't have no intellectual argument against the reality of God or, or of Christ. You, don't, you can't win that argument. And you're not concerned about winning it. You're covering up. You don't want to uh, look at that cross and say, that that took place because I am a sinner. You don't want to look at that and say, that act happened because of my sin. And so you engage in all types of ways. You, you begin looking at those who would proclaim that message as hate speech. 
you look you look at those and I don't fault everybody in that social media world. But there's a mindset. And that mindset, people don't even know they're deluded by that mindset. I just had a quick vision the other day. Thought. And, and most of you know my position on abortion. I just thought in the debates we have in our society, and some this last year who were so adamant that they sent coat hangers to people who would support a, a Supreme Court nom nominee by the name of Justice Kavanaugh, they sent coat hangers to those who were going to vote on that and said, in essence, if you ever say we cannot abort our children, Remember, remember, that's the message. We will stick coat hangers in us to tear up those kids if we have to. That was that message from the side that says, we are noble, we are just, and we can stand with women. And I just thought, some are honestly, I, I, I don't make light of the tragedy of what's happened with a lot of women in our society. And unwanted pregnancies, I understand that. But the, and I thought, but what would the child say? Those who've been convinced that that's something good and right. And if you could just hear the kid, what would the kid say? Uh, mommy, uh, I don't know a lot of things. I'm just entering into life. But I had security in this strange thing, this act of life, for these six, eight months in the womb, and it's a natural thing for me to hide in my mom. But there's so much stuff that people have said to you, my mom, that you're convinced that you must end my life before I even see the light of day. And all I would say to you, and, and what would the mom say? You know, no, no child or daughter, son. No, you don't understand. I understand that you're concerned. This is the mother speaking to the child. I understand that you have certain things you'd like to say, and you're not able to speak them yet. But in this act of me aborting you, even up until the ninth month, you've got to understand that our society deems this act as something that's a freedom of a right that a woman has, right to privacy. And therefore, and, and maybe the kid child would say, I don't understand all those things. It just seems so unnatural that you would end me now before I too can grow and learn. And how have people been convinced they're the, ser they're the sole decider in those things. The mother. The, don't let people convince you that something bad is so good. And I understand that people in so many of these areas are so tricked and deceived. I understand that. And things are couched in this is social justice. There is social justice. But things like that are not social justice. So today, we had a little extra time. For those who question, they say he was a madman. The great writer C.S. Lewis said, some people said Jesus was a madman. And C.S. Lewis, who was an atheist himself, or at least agnostic at one point later converted, wrote the great children's books and the chronicles. And all. He said, no, you don't have that option. You cannot say he was a good man and he met Jesus was just a good man, another one of the prophets. He said, no, you don't have that option. He was either the son of God or he was a madman because he was convinced that if he went to that cross, he would save humanity. And you say that's offensive to, that's what happened. And what would the, the people that, fought against his message, fought against him. When he was risen, 
Was there joy in that group that was convinced they had to fight him to the end? No, this New Testament tells us they hatched a plan and said, let's say his disciples came and stole him by night. You'd think at that point, after all of that, you would say he loved us and he died for us. All the, No, they said, let's fight him still. You know, I thought the other day, what's the biggest lie that you believe things in society because you've been convinced of certain things through many forms of media, whether it's this, what, but the, what's the biggest lie? I thought that, that he has not been risen from the dead. You say, surely there, be, well, there was evidence. There was testimony. Then why do they not want to believe it? Light has come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light because they're these. That's why. That's why. Okay. So this will be, I'll add this. I'll post this in a little while. I'll try not to post the whole teaching video. I had to kill some time. This, you'll see this in the future because I think I added some things that would be beneficial. Um, just remember, in all the whatever testimony goes forth, writing, teaching, uh, speaking, at the right time, some, some of the stuff we teach, some people are just at, a, at not that I'm advanced, but they're at a different stage. There might be things... Young Christians, I've seen, they hold on, or even older ones, and they're very convinced about things, and it's really not my job to, I understand we have all types of disfellowship, Catholics, Protestants, full gospel, Pentecost assemblies of God, Reformed, many of these brothers and sisters who are part of this little community, I understand that they have very strong opinions, even against one another. And it's and I'm familiar with many of these arguments that have been made. And remember, love is the most important thing. In First Corinthians 13, Paul says that. Though I have to speak with the tongues of angels and of men, have not charity, profit. Though I give my body to be burned, though I did, and have not love. It suffers long, it's kind. It doesn't boast, it's not proud. You see, look at look at Jesus, look at him. Look at what, how he fit, fulfilled the mission. The one that every other mission depends on. And as offensive as that is to society and to humanity, he did indeed die for you. And at the end of the day, it's going to be you and God. When you go and when you stand, it, every one of us is going to give an account for the things that we've done. And when you stand at that day, you can deny as much as you want. It's more real than your life at this very present moment. So live with that in mind, okay? This will be a little teaching that someday you'll see in the future because I talked a little bit the other things that are just just contemporary for this time th let those fall by the way okay and just uh, I'll pray again for you guys Father I pray a blessing on everybody that the word of the Lord would go out people of God would see that they are the authority of the kingdom of God is in us as God's people that you've called us our authority doesn't come from men. It comes from God because you have put your spirit in us. You, you witness through us, all of the people of God. And so I pray that uh, we would just, we would walk in those things. We ask that in Jesus' name. Amen.